Dual citizenship is often seen as a privilege, offering individuals the benefits of being a citizen of two countries. However, many people may not realize that it also comes with its own set of challenges and limitations. In this video, we will explore the downsides of having dual citizenship and look into which countries around the world do not allow their citizens to hold multiple nationalities. If you're interested, keep watching. Some countries such as China, India, Japan, Singapore, and several in the Middle East do not permit dual citizenship. If you obtain citizenship in any of these countries, you will be required to renounce your previous nationality. Recently, my friend's son received his British passport. He's had his Ghanaian passport since birth, so now he holds two nationalities. Fortunately, the UK allows dual citizenship so he can keep both. I've been exploring the pros and cons of dual citizenship, and in this video, I'm going to share some of the downsides I've discovered. One of the major issues I've found is related to career restrictions. This point has really caught my attention. For instance, I know a lady from the Philippines who has been living in the UK for over 15 years but does not have a UK passport. She is a legal resident with indefinite leave to remain. Similarly, an Indian friend of mine also has indefinite leave to remain, but has not applied for British citizenship. They both have their reasons for not doing so. Now, come to think of it, imagine you have eye on getting a British passport soon, but contemplating whether to go ahead with it. Let me explain why. In case you have political ambitions or are genuinely interested in politics. However, I know in Ghana, if you want to become a member of parliament or hold a high position in government, dual citizenship is not allowed. You must choose one nationality. So, you can be faced with this dilemma, a British passport or a potential career in Ghanaian politics. Is it worth it? I understand why many people with indefinite leave to remain haven't applied for British citizenship. They don't want to publicly declare their dual nationality because it could limit their career opportunities in their home country. In some countries, if you hold dual citizenship, you cannot be a judge, a minister, a member of parliament, or even a deputy minister. So for those of you who may be eligible to apply for British citizenship in the coming years, The main reason some countries restrict dual citizens from holding certain positions, particularly in government or sensitive sectors, is due to concerns over loyalty and the handling of classified information. When you have access to highly sensitive information that the general public does not, it raises the question, where do your loyalties truly lie? Are you loyal to Ghana or to Britain? If, for instance, Ghana is planning something strategic that involves or affects Britain, can the authorities be confident that you would stand firmly with Ghana? This ambiguity in allegiance creates a conflict of interest. Because of this uncertainty, countries prefer not to take any chances. You can pursue many other career paths, but roles involving access to classified information, such as being a minister, a high-ranking government official, or any position where national security is at stake, are generally off-limits for dual citizens. Military service and national allegiance. A similar principle applies to those interested in joining the military. In many countries, if you join the military of another country, you are often required to renounce your original nationality. This makes sense from a national security standpoint. Imagine a scenario where someone is originally from Russia, marries someone from Ukraine, becomes a Ukrainian citizen, and then joins the Ukrainian military. While I am not fully versed in the military regulations of Russia or Ukraine, this serves as a hypothetical example. Russia might say, as long as you serve in the Ukrainian military, you are no longer considered a Russian citizen. This policy is logical because if a conflict were to arise between these two nations, it would be impossible to determine where this individual's true loyalty lies. Are they for Ukraine or for Russia? In such situations, trust becomes a major issue and the person must choose one side. Potential conflicts of interest and divided loyalties. This question of divided loyalty extends beyond just politics and military service. It can impact various fields, including intelligence services, law enforcement, and other roles where one's allegiance must be clear and unquestionable. For example, a dual citizen might find it difficult to work in sensitive roles within a country's foreign affairs department or national security agency. There is always the fear that when push comes to shove, 
a person might have conflicting loyalties or could be pressured by one government to share sensitive information about the other. Therefore, before you decide to pursue dual citizenship, it's crucial to consider these potential conflicts. It's not just about the convenience of having two passports or being able to live and work freely in two countries. There are deeper implications, especially when it comes to national security, loyalty, and trust. As you weigh the benefits and drawbacks of dual citizenship, think about your long-term plans. Do you aspire to hold a government position, enter politics, or serve in the military? Do you anticipate being in a situation where your loyalty could be questioned? If so, it might be wise to think carefully about whether holding dual nationality aligns with your future goals. In some cases, retaining just one citizenship might offer a clearer path forward, free from the constraints and conflicts that dual citizenship could bring. When it comes to renouncing your citizenship to join the military of another country, I completely understand why this is necessary. It's about ensuring that your loyalty is not divided. So, if you are considering a career in the military and hold dual citizenship, make sure you have read up on all the requirements and implications before moving forward with that decision. The second downside of dual nationality is the lengthy and often complicated process of obtaining it. For some people, it's straightforward. They are simply born into it. Take my friend's son, for instance, and any future children they may have. Since he was born here, he automatically qualifies to apply for a British passport. But for someone like me, who came to the UK two years ago, it's a completely different story. I have to first obtain indefinite leave to remain after staying and working in the UK for five years. After achieving that, I still need to wait an additional 12 months before I became eligible to apply for British citizenship. Then there's a whole series of steps, applying for citizenship, attending a citizenship ceremony, and finally, applying for a passport. It's a drawn-out process that involves multiple stages, each with its own requirements, waiting periods, and costs. And that's just my situation. Depending on the visa category a person comes in on, some may need to wait as long as 10 years before they can even apply for citizenship. So, unless you were born into it or you qualify through your parents' citizenship or residency status at the time of your birth, the reality of the process can be very frustrating. There are endless forms to fill out, documentation to gather, legal hoops to jump through, and fees to pay. The process is also emotionally taxing because there are often long periods of waiting with no certainty about the outcome. For instance, while waiting for approval, you might need to provide additional documents or deal with delays caused by bureaucratic backlogs. Every step of the way can bring its own set of challenges, and it's not uncommon for people to spend years working toward their goal of dual citizenship. The whole journey can feel like an uphill battle, especially when you think you're almost there, only to realize there are yet more requirements to meet. So, before you set out to obtain dual nationality, it's important to consider whether it's truly worth it for you. Are you prepared for the long, potentially frustrating process? Are you clear on the implications of holding two passports, including the potential restrictions on your career or civic engagement? Dual citizenship certainly has its advantages, but it also comes with a fair share of challenges that are not often talked about. If you're thinking about pursuing it, make sure you do your research thoroughly. Understand all the legal requirements and potential pitfalls and weigh them against your personal goals and future plans. It's a decision that shouldn't be taken lightly, as it could significantly impact both your present and your future. The third downside of dual citizenship is the risk of double taxation. This is a significant concern that many people overlook. Some individuals avoid obtaining a British passport or any second citizenship, because of potential conflicts with their home country's tax laws. For instance, some people in the U.S. have had to renounce their original citizenship due to the complexities and burdens of double taxation. Double taxation occurs when you are taxed on the same income or property by two different countries. This can happen to dual citizens depending on the tax laws of each country involved, 
For example, if you are a dual citizen of the United States and another country, the United States tax system requires you to report and pay taxes on your worldwide income, regardless of where it is earned. So, if you have a United States passport and earn rental income from property in Ghana, you are obligated to pay taxes on that income to the United States government. However, if you only have a green card and are not a U.S. citizen, you might be able to avoid these additional taxes. Because of this, some people choose not to accept citizenship from certain countries due to these double taxation issues. Thankfully, there are tax treaties between the U.S. and certain countries designed to help reduce or eliminate an individual's tax liability and avoid double taxation. These treaties ensure that income is only taxed once, either by the U.S. or the country where it was earned. For example, there is a tax treaty between the U.S. and New Zealand that overrides each country's income tax laws to prevent double taxation. If you hold dual citizenship as both a U.S. and New Zealand citizen, there are measures in place to avoid paying taxes in both countries for the same income. However, even with a tax treaty in place, dual citizens may still be required to file U.S. tax returns, even if they are living and earning income in New Zealand. While these treaties can mitigate the impact of double taxation, they do not always eliminate it entirely. It's important to note that tax laws change frequently, often annually, depending on the policies of the current government. Because of this, it's crucial for dual citizens to stay informed about current tax laws and understand their obligations in both countries. Being aware of these details will help you manage your tax liabilities more effectively and avoid any unpleasant surprises before deciding to pursue dual Another major identity crisis that comes with having dual nationality is the feeling of being torn between two places. You might wonder, where do I truly belong? Are you Ghanaian because your parents are Ghanaian? Deep down, how would you answer if someone asked, where are you from? When a white person asks you where you're from, it's often because they assume you aren't from their country. You might say Ghana, but when you're in Ghana and people notice your accent is different, they might also ask, where are you from? So do you still say Ghana? This can create a real identity crisis. It may seem like a trivial issue on the surface, but it's actually very significant. An identity crisis is no small matter. Just ask African Americans in the U.S. Many still struggle with this issue today. It leaves you feeling like you don't fully fit in anywhere, unable to integrate completely into any one society.